Okay, cool. So this one is, where am I? I'm in here? I'm in here now. Okay. This one's going to be about how do we animate emoji on the command line, which is an interesting thing, right? Because I don't think we think of the command line as like an animation medium, right? It's just a console. Um, so that's interesting. And then emoji is interesting in its own right. Um, and so the combination of animating emoji on the command line is it's, it's not supposed to be a gimmick and it's not just supposed to be cute. If you think about it, if you're a developer, you, your developer interface or your developer experience is going to be through the command line. And so what do I mean when I say the command line? What am I talking about? So when you are compiling a program, you're going to use a console, right? This is sort of like what a console will look like. Um, and <clears throat> consoles typically give you two types of things. They give you what's called standard output and standard error. So I know that doesn't make much sense if you haven't seen that before. So let me just show you what I mean. Okay, so like let's say, actually let me check for questions. Okay, so like let's say if I did hello world, right? So we're in the command line, right? We're in terminal or some console-like application. And I'm calling the, the echo program, right? And I'm giving it an argument, right? So it's actually not that different than from like a function in a programming language, right? So like you can imagine if that's what you're used to seeing, right? In the command line, it's kind of, it's, it's just more flexible. Um, it's not better, it's not worse, it's just different, right? So we can do like hello world. Now for what it's worth, anytime you get stuck with this kind of stuff, what you can do is go to explain shell and then here, if you paste in whatever program you'd be typing, this will show you what, what's going on behind the scenes. So we're calling the echo command. And if I wanted to learn more about it, I could do man echo, right? And so this is going to give me more information. Now, this is just an argument. So this could be anything. The fact that it says hello world is actually insignificant, right? So if I do this, so I do echo hello world. Uh oh, oh. So, <laughs> uh, this is actually good that that happened. If I did echo hello world, and I press enter, right, I expect to get hello world back on the command line. And instead I get like this really vague message instead. So what's happening is that the, the um, exclamation is effectively, it's a command. Um, and so it's calling this command and that's not at all what we want. So to keep things simple, we're going to use a, uh, a different kind of a string, right? So we can do echo, and then instead, uh, we're going to use single quotes, right? So we do echo, hello, world. And anywhere where you're, like, passing in data and you're, like, unsure if you're going to, like, screw anything up, um, I definitely recommend escaping it with these, these single quotes because otherwise you can just get into this, like, world of pain, um, that is just totally unnecessary, right? It's, it's, it's antagonistic to your developer experience or your developer interface, right? So we do echo hello world and we get it. So this is standard output. Standard output being like good. This is what we want. Um, to keep it simple, there are two types of messages that we'll get on the command line. We're, we're gonna have standard output and we're gonna have standard error. And so the shorthands, right, the, the, the nickname for these is let me do like output standard error the the short name for this is going to be standard out and standard error right so it's really just the first two the last d i don't know it's either d it doesn't matter but the point is it's standard output or standard error these this is how we can receive messages and we can filter them for the good messages for versus the bad messages right so if i do like echo uh, and we do like this is a good message, right? And it's okay that I have this exclamation mark because I have these single quotes around it. This is a good message. Now, if I do like, this is a bad, do like, bad message. Um, this is still standard error, uh, standard, <laughs> this is still standard output. The fact that I put bad is completely arbitrary. So we need to effectively tell this output to be bad output or to be standard error. So one way we can do that 
is we're effectively going to force whatever output, we're going to redirect it to be a standard error. Like, let's see if we can think of, um, let me check message, uh, any like questions, and then I'll, I'll try to explain an analogy for this. Okay, so, oh, cool, I'm not alone anymore. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, yeah, feel free to ask questions whenever and as often as possible. Okay, so the point is, um, <clears throat> there are two types of messages that we can get, right? Good and bad. We call them standard output, and we call them standard error. And this is pretty much invisible to us because, like, I don't know that, like, the computer will tell you this. It just sort of expects it from you. So, like, let's, let's think of, like, a real-world metaphor for this. Um, let's say I have, on my phone, um, I have a contact. <laughs> I have a contact, and the name of the contact is standard output. Anytime I receive a text message from standard output, that conversation is going to cache just the good messages. And I have a second contact, right? Standard error. And then anytime that, that I receive a text message from standard error, that's going to cache the bad messages. And so that's what's happening here, but it's a little invisible to us. So let me just give you, um, give you an example. So like, let's say, I'm going to use Go, so we're going to use Golang here, and I'm just going to do the simplest hello world, right? So instead of hello, whoops, hello world here, we're going to do it right in here. All right, and you can do this in Python, you can do this in any language you want. I'm just going to do this here. Okay, so if I do hello world, I'm still going to get standard error, uh, so, so standard output. So I'm going to do go, run, run, test, and then the name of this file is just test.go. Okay, standard output. But what I can also do is use f print line. Well, what does that stand for? It seems like totally random. Um, well, I can do go doc, which is a, <clears throat> it's like right in go, you have like go run, you have go build, we also have go doc, and this will give us more information about some function that we're using, right? So here, I wanna do go doc on the package fmt, and then specifically this function. So do like, We'll start with print line. Okay, print line formats, blah, 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 blah. Um, standard output, right? That's what we've been talking about. But we want to understand how we can use standard error as well. Okay, so let's understand print line, uh, F print line. The fact that this is case insensitive, it's not going to hurt us. We're not in Go, we're in Unix world, which is a bit more flexible. Okay, so F print line. The difference being formats, uh, it actually doesn't say, which is sort of surprising. Um, anyway, the point is that we can direct our output to either standard error or standard output. So how we can do that is we can use OS standard error or we can use OS standard out. So here, right, here I'm using package format, which is being imported here. I can also use package OS, which we haven't included yet which is fine, we're gonna do that later. But now I can direct my output to be either a good or a bad message. So I'm gonna call this command, which will automatically import any dependencies for us. And now this should be executable. So think about, think about it like, like this, right? If we have this, these are actually identical. Uh, there is no functional difference for us between either of these two um, commands. And this is completely language independent in the sense that you should be able to do this in any modern programming language. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And we should expect to get um, just hello world twice. It's, it's not significant. Here, I can substitute standard out with standard error, right? And let's do hello darkness my old friend I've come to talk to you again and okay so let's see what happens still arbitrary um, and this is like really problematic because let's say we have like 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 everything is a okay and then down here we have like mayday right, over and over and over again. The thing is, we'd have to like, 
we'd have to look at this in order to understand that there that like one of these messages is good or bad. We have to semantically analyze them. And that's not very programmatic if you think about it, right? We shouldn't necessarily have to like analyze every sentence for like the goodness or the badness of it, especially if the sentence is vague, it's not going to help us out. So let's, re let's review real quick, right? So um, in the Twitter bot screencast, one of the things that we did is when we ran the program, we made sure that we captured both the standard output and the standard error. So like, let's inspect the standard error. So I have this file and I'm just going to cat, which means concatenate. I'm just going to show it. And let's just inspect the, the error, the possible error messages. Um, for just like standard error, right? So these are error messages that the, the bot received for whatever reason. Um, and so, so there's good messages and there's bad messages. And so instead of just like having everything just printed out, what we can do is direct the good messages and the bad messages to separate files. And I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, let me just check. Cool, we got five people. Huh. That's so cool. Okay, if you guys have questions, just ask me. Um, this is, again, it's for you, so I'm just documenting what I know, but I hope it's like helpful for you. Okay, so we talked about we have standard output, we have standard error, but when we print it, we don't right now, we can't reconcile which is which unless we like literally put in, and I mean, this is okay, it's not the worst thing. Um, but it's adding unnecessary complexity. So like, it looks nice, but standard error and standard out are so similar anyway that like, visually it's gonna take just a little bit extra effort than needed to sort of discern one from the other. Okay, so let's talk about how do we direct these to files. Well, in Unix what we can do, we'll do like echo, we'll go back to the first example, we'll do like hello world. If we do hello world, that's fine. And let's say I want to direct this output to my standard out. So this is an example of a good message, right? So do hello world to standard out. What I'm doing here is I'm saying whatever the output that I get from the command before it, I want you to put it into a file called standard out. Now this guy is actually a shorthand for this. So you can think of standard out as number one and standard error as number two. So wait a minute, if we made that two, that would mean that this is standard error in which case we would want to rename the file. Okay, let's try that, right? So if I go ahead and, and do cat uh, standard error, right, let's check, right? ls is for file, so we're just listing the files. Another thing I could have done is open this in Finder, right? We have the actual program we're running and we have the, the file. If we go ahead and open up standard error, it's empty. So what happened to our like sweet hello hello world, right? We're, we're directing it into this file. Well, if you notice, it's still popping up right here. So what happened is that the, this is standard output. So this, I know this is like sort of weird. The standard output is still being printed to the console. We've only captured the standard error. So it's kind of like I have two baseballs. One's good and one's bad. And I'm throwing both of them at the same time. And I'm only catching one of them. That's going in the standard error. The other one, it's, no one's catching it, it's just all on the console. So, okay, let's, let's try that again, right? Let's go back, we'll do one, right, for standard out, and okay, we'll put that in the standard out file. Okay, so this will create a file and put the content in there. Okay, so let's do cat standard out. Yeah, and so we caught it this time, right? We threw the baseball and we caught it. So that's fine, but what if our program emits both standard output and standard error? How do we reconcile that, right? We need to capture both. And so when we ran the program for the Twitter bot, one of the things that we did would be like dot slash bot, that would be how we execute the program. So the name of our program is just bot, dot slash basically runs it. And then what I can do is capture the standard output into a file called standard output. And so simultaneously, we're going to capture the standard error and put that in its own file. So that's interesting. We're not limited to like capturing one thing at a time. It's basically like we're throwing, like we have like, there's two of us. There's me and there's you. I'm throwing you two baseballs simultaneously and you're catching bo both of them simultaneously. It's just that we're catching them in separate files. Okay, so we do standard error. So now, Let's check both of them, right? So 
Ch we have standard output, and we have a new standard error. So now let's go back to our Go program and see how to sort of make meaning of this. Okay. How are we doing? Okay, cool. So, so here's our Go program, and it's pretty simple. We're just gonna print to standard output, and then we're gonna print to standard error. And that means that we don't need this anymore. Okay, so everything is A-okay. And then here, because this is no longer identical, we have made a, made a, made a. Okay, so now let's try our program again. So, okay, we do go run test.go. So we're gonna execute our file, or sorry, well, yeah, we're gonna execute our Go program, and then we're gonna capture the standard output. Simultaneously, we're gonna capture the standard error. Okay, so now we're not getting any messages on the console, and that kind of makes sense, right? We have two files, standard error and standard output, and we can go ahead and read both of them. So we got mayday, mayday, mayday in the error, while in our output, we got everything is a okay. So, so now I think you're starting to learn a bit about how you might like, not just like write your programs, right? You wanna emit good and bad messages, but you also wanna capture them, and you don't wanna capture them in a way where you have to semantically like analyze it, and then like, Think about this. If you wanted to indicate different levels of like badness, right? If we if we talk right about the, the Twitter bot, we had two types of errors. We had a function, oops, we had a function for like warnings, and we had a function for fatal. So I just had fatal for short. And so both of these can go ahead and write to standard error. But in that case, we still need to reconcile whether it's a warning or an error. So let me just show you how we might do that. And then we're gonna start getting into the animation bit. Okay, so like let's say these, these both take, um, let's just do string for now. So they both take a string. And then what we can do is we're gonna do f print line. We're gonna basically copy this line, put that there. And we're gonna print to the standard error and now, because we need to differentiate a warning from a theta, what we can do is just go ahead and do this for now. There's other things that you could do, obviously, but this is just building on our foundation. Okay, so now, all we need to do is interpolate the string that we're passing as an argument into f print line, right? So we'll need to change this from print line to print f, because we're going to do print format, right? And so other programs like C, uh, just call this printf. In Go, we're gonna use format printf like this. Okay, so to do that, we can just put that there and we need to put a new line at the end, okay? Um, let's make this a little bit more descriptive and change that. Uh, Let's do, uh, we'll keep like, we'll do like warn message, which means this can be theta message. Okay. So, let's make a final function called uh, like good. And we'll just say like good message. Okay, um, what is this there? Okay, cool. Now here, we're just gonna do print line, uh, print f, and we're changing this to standard out. So we could make this f print, we could make this print f and omit os standard out altogether, or standard out, right? We could just get rid of that and do everything here. But we wanna be really, really uh, explicit to us right now that, that we're, we're writing to standard out and not standard error. So I'm just gonna make this explicit, even though it is the same. And we're gonna put good, and then we'll put good message. Good message. Okay, so what's, something's off. Oh, printf. Printf, printf, printf. Okay, cool. So now, let's go ahead and do this. We'll make these single line functions. Hmm. 
and then I'll check the comments. Okay, cool. Let's check. Hello, is it printer for for file print format? To be honest, I thought that F printf stands for. I think I mean you're right about print format. Um, so the thing is, yeah, I think you're right. Um, F usually in this context stands for either file or uh, this is probably like just more than you need to know, but I'll just point it out. Uh, file descriptor, which <laughs> like what does that mean? Because um, like you'd want the thing that we're talking about to be descriptive, and it's almost ironic that like. Like file descriptor is like a completely meaningless expression again. So just like it is virtually file, um, but the way that like Unix and, and the stuff works is that we don't think about like files in terms of their names. Like right, like um, like let's say I have like a file named standard out. The way that Unix recognizes this actually that's a bad name. Uh, let's we'll just call this file right file name. The way that Unix recognizes this like internally is not a string, but, but a number. So like zero, one, two. And so these are file descriptors. They're basically shortcuts for the system. So it doesn't need to like check against a string. It can just check against a number. So I guess it's much more efficient. So think of file as like, hi, this is my file dot like file. <laughs> and then a file descriptor would be like some unique identifier um, like, right, like one, two, three, three might be the file descriptor. So it's a, another way to describe the file that is sort of more internal. So you're right in the sense that it is file, but I think technically it's for file descriptor. And I, I'm just pointing that out because if you, if you see file descriptor, I don't want you to be like, you know, what does that mean? Hope I answer that. Cool. Okay. So let's go back to, to here. Okay, so now we're ready to do to, to, to do something pretty cool, right? We can do all three of these messages. So we can do like, like, uh, yo, mama, so, that's a bad example. We'll just do like, hello world. Um, we'll do hello darkness here, because it's like a little sad. And then we'll do like, Hello, darkness, my old friend. So it's like really sad, right? So, yeah, that's fine. So basically, we've, we've said in our program that we want to express three different levels of, of output, right? We have good output, which is not like better or good or great. It's just good. It's like, on, you know, it's simple. But for bad output, we have warnings and we have fatal warnings, right? So let's see what happens. All we need to do is when we run this, we can do right this one. We want to capture the standard out and we want to capture the standard error. Okay, so we run the program, cat standard out, cool, and then cat standard error. And we get the two different types of bad messages. Now, like in actual, like in reality, uh, the way that I personally use these different types of functions for Actually, you know, just for what it's worth, people tend to not use good. They tend to use like info. So like info is just neutral. Um, it's just information. So technically the way that I would use like a fatal is I do an OS exit, which will basically kill the, the program, right? So we'll come back to this in just a second. But the point is that like, let's say I put my fatal message in between my info and my warning. The fact is, if it's fatal, I can't continue, right? It's like a fatality, I can't continue. So running this, let's check the standard error, because that's all we care about right now. What do you expect to see, right? Do you expect to see hello darkness, my old friend, end hello darkness, or, or something else? So what happened? We got hello darkness, my old friend, which would correspond to the second line, and instead of this, we got exit status one, which was because of this guy. And if we, like, like where is exit status coming from? Um, it's actually Go trying to help us out. Whenever we use Go run versus like 
Go build. Go run will try to be a little bit more gentle. Um, because, like, <laughs> you know, it's like already vague enough to check whether it's standard output or standard error. You need to redirect it into a file, for example. If you want to check how a program exited, if I do like echo hello world and there's no problems, I can do echo, uh, what is it like? Is it that? It is that. Um, if I do this command, which is a dollar question mark, it tells me how the last program exited. So zero is, act is, is good, and one is bad in this case. So the fact is, when we run this program, it's going to kill the program right here. It kills here, which means that we're not just going to kill the program, but we're going to kill it with a um, with a, it's not like it's not a file descriptor. We're going to kill we're going to kill it with like an error message kind of right. So if I do, we're not going to do echo. We're going to do go run. Okay, let's check how the program exited. Okay, so it exited with a one. And another way that we can reconcile that is if we use go run. Go is trying to help us out because it's like, go knows that that's like super vague that you should like, oh, let me just check the, how it exited. That's like ridiculous. So go run is like a very, it's, it's definitely like a more refined developer experience, which is why I love Go so much because there's been a lot of thought and sort of intelligent design um, into making Go much more like friendly as not just a programming language, but sort of like as an etho, like as an ecosystem to work inside of. Okay, does anybody have any questions about this? Um, really good question. Let me take a look. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, so the question is here. I'll paste it in here. Okay, so was just wondering if f printf os standard out was equivalent to printf. Yeah, so um, you don't have to second guess yourself. The thing is, fprintf is identical. It's just like not necessary. Um, again, right? We can just do we can just do this, and then like leave this blank, and it is totally equivalent. The fact is, um, fprintf or fprintline or fprint for what it's worth, like in practice, you would never, never, never need to do this just because it's like added complexity. But at the same time, you might want to be explicit about it if you do like single line functions, right? So if I go ahead and do this guy, it's actually nice, what, it, what happened? Uh, right? Oh, I see, there we go, just put the exit away. So it's actually nice that these line up. Um, technically in like programming languages, you can have as many white spaces as you want. So like alternatively, I could just do this and then like do that and then like line this up. Um, that technically, actually we could go even further, right? We could do that. That's fine in theory, except when you use programs like Go Imports, which will automatically format and like make your program pretty for you. Um, it doesn't like that at all. It just cuts that out. So this is actually a good example of even though fprintf is redundant, and it's like overly verbose, it does help us, sem um, not semantically, it helps us visually uh, reconcile whether we're using standard error or standard out. All right, so we're almost finished with this part of this thing, but I just wanna point out, um, if you're like especially new to development, we talked about files and we talked about file descriptors. Once you have a file, like if I do like f uh, error os uh, create, new file. I think that's the syntax. Like if we're creating a file and a possible error from creating a new file. This is a, it's not a file descriptor, but we can use it like it's a file descriptor, which is really cool. Um, so I can go here and then instead of standard out, if I want to send, like if I want to print some text to this file, I mean, I'd have to deal with the error, right? So I can just, I'm just gonna like hide the error, right? We're error free right now. So I'm basically creating a file and then I'm sending um, like a message, I'm, I'm writing to the file and like get rid of that. So that's like you, you have OS standard out, you have these things that are available to you, 
But if you want to just like make your own file and you don't want to have to do everything manually, uh, like I've been doing here, totally, totally can do that. Um, which is like a lot more succinct if you think about it. So we could, right, like this would be kind of nice. Uh, let me just show you real quick. We could do like, um, we we'll do like standard, we'll like create two files in advance. So we're, we're basically, we're gonna take this and make it like this, but still have the exact same output. So we're gonna basically play, we're gonna make two variables, standard out and standard error. And for now, we're gonna just make them OS files. And so this is the type. Um, if I go to go doc, I can go to go doc OS uh, file. When I create a file, I'm getting back a pointer to an OS file. So this would be basically, um, I'm like, I'm, I'm providing memory for my standard output and my standard error. And then when my program starts, let's just like get rid of this for now. I'll hide this for now. Oops. So when my program starts, what I need to do is go ahead and like assign a file to these guys. Um, so what I could do is like standard out, and then I need like a I need like an empty error. Okay, so I have an empty error variable error type is error, and then I'll do os create, and then we'll do standard out. Um, do if error does not equal nil. Uh, let's just get rid of the error. This is going to make things more verbose. Okay, cool. Like, like for this, the error really doesn't matter. Um, an example, like where we would get an error is if standard out already exists, then that's not good. Uh, that would be an example of where it would be nice to know that something's wrong. But for now, we can just skip that. So now, this is effectively um, uh, getting rid of the need to initialize the files in this sort of like hackish way, right? Okay, so we're, we have these global variables, standard out and standard error. Their type is a pointer to an OS file. And then in the main, it could be anywhere, we're basically initializing these, right? Which means we can go back to our friendly old info, theta, and warnings. And now we can swap these out. So standard out, and then these two are standard error. And so, right, we added like a, just a couple of it, like a few more lines, but now like we don't, we have less complexity. Um, let, me, let me do this, right? Let me remove the existing standard error and standard out and run it again. And yeah, so now we, we've optimized basically, um, we're doing the same thing, but it's, 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 it's like, Anything you can do to make your program more readable and manageable and especially maintainable, um, your future self will thank you. Because what tends to happen is we'll get like hyper, hyper like, like memorize everything that we're doing right now perfectly. And we have it in memory and like we understand everything about our program. And then we go to bed and it sort of gets soft. And then after a week, seriously, like after a couple days, um, you'll look at your program and you won't remember it. And it's not like your own fault. I mean, it's, there's too many things to remember when you're programming that for you to be sloppy um, might be fast, might be faster, but it's not a good way for you to, to like develop in the long term. Um, and so, you know, extra two, four lines of code here is actually much nicer than having to like do this every time or like if we screw up, then like, uh, it's too late. So, it's good to it's good to be clean. Uh, okay, how are we doing? Any questions, guys? By the way, I optimized the um, the output so it should be a little bit sort of like I like made sure that the text is a little bit softer. I like lowered the bit rate, but try to keep the quality the same. So hopefully, this stream is like performing really well. I don't want to lose people in other countries just because like. I'm throwing too much data at them. Okay, so let's do one more thing and then we're going to start to try to figure out how to animate. Um, that is this sort of like, 
You don't need to know this, but I think it's actually really, really valuable. Let's go back to do echo hello world, right? Cool. We know it's standard out uh, because that's the nature of echo. So what if we want to force this to be an error? Is there a way to do that? Can we take what would have been an output? Like can we, like instead of throwing baseball on the left hand and the right hand, what, can we like throw them across? So we're, we're like mixing the signals. Can, can like the standard output be error? Can the error be output? We can. Um, so, so far you're used to seeing like this guy, right? So standard out or that, like that, right? Those are equivalent. What we can alternatively do is we can say, I want to force this to be standard error. So I can do, is that, I think, I think that's right. We'll have to check. Basically, there's some custom syntax that we can use to take output and force it or redirect it into another stream. Standard output, standard error, those are called streams. Let's see if this works. I don't actually know. Okay, and then let's do like, how do we, how can we check? If we want to check if it's standard error, oh, you know what we can do? We can do like this, right? Does that work? Let's go ahead and remove the files. Um, okay, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> so I might have to look this up. I think, I think that's what we can do. So let's find out. Um, oops, it's not working. I think, so Unix can be like super quirky. I think we might need to do it like this. Yeah, holy cow. Um, if you like have a hard time programming in JavaScript, like Unix is like, Unix can be much worse. Okay, so like, let's see if explain shell would have caught that. Uh, that's not what I want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it got it close enough. Basically, we're redirecting the output. So the fact is, we like, okay, no worries. We have to know in advance. Um, we have to know a couple things in advance, but that's pretty much why I'm making these screencasts, because there's just like too high a barrier to entry for programmers. And I think a lot of people burn out just from like the pure grief that comes with programming. Okay, so here we're taking what's otherwise a good message and we're, we're going to redirect the standard output as a standard error, and then we're gonna capture any standard error into this file. So like, the thing is like, again, you don't really need to know this, but I just wanna like, this in itself is actually really nice to know. Um, sometimes you're like writing a program and you just like need to know if something's standard error or standard out, or you need to put all of your standard error and standard output in the same place, like, uh, like uh, let's see, like if I like if I wanted my standard error to be to come out as standard output, then I would do like this, right? So I'm taking my standard error and I'm redirecting it into my standard out. So in theory, if I do like standard out, um, so now we won't know if this works unless like our echo program fails, right? So how do we make our echo program fail? Well, we're just gonna type in like a command that doesn't exist. So what'll happen is this in itself will emit a standard error, right? So I can just do like blah, blah, blah. This is a standard error message. So, oops, so holy cow. So we basically want to redirect the standard error into standard output, right? So we do, um, like that, we're taking the standard error and redirecting it into standard output, and then we want to capture everything from the standard output into just like, we'll just we'll just call it output, right? So the fact is that this has to go before this is like super quirky, um, but the point is we're taking our error, redirecting it, and putting it basically everything into our output. So whether this worked or not, right? It it's all gonna go into one file, right? So whether we get a bad message 
where we get a good message, both times we're going to get it in a single place, um, which is like reverse engineering everything we've done so far. But I just want to make sure that you know this stuff. Okay, can we do any questions? Is anyone confused so far? The thing is, like, talking about animating emoji on the command line is sort of like a misnomer if we don't understand this stuff in advance. If we don't understand the command line, if we don't understand output and errors and redirecting and files. So that's why I'm sort of covering this in advance. Okay, so this is the part where I don't know 100% actually how to animate on the command line. So I have to figure this out with you. Um, what I'd like to do, what I'd prefer to do, is take like a 10 minute break, um, just so I can like take a breath, and that way um, I'll like try to get some more people on the stream, and then we'll, we'll try to solve this together. In the meantime, if you want to, feel free to like, figure out how you animate a message on the command line, um, if it helps you, so that we're both going into this with just a little bit of information, but not the whole picture. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep the, anyway, uh, let's see what time it is. Yeah, uh, I'll come back, so it's like nine o'clock my time, I'll come back in 10 minutes, and we'll just pick it up from there. Okay, I will see you relatively soon. Thanks for watching.